Hello, friend. Hello, friends. I'm Karina Chin with KarinaStounce.com, and I want to welcome you today to my Facebook Live and my YouTube Live. I'm so excited to be here with you. I live in Edmonton, Alberta, and I've been doing this for 15 years, and I love sharing stamping. So I'm happy to have you join me. If you're here, leave a comment to let me know that it's actually streaming and it's working today. I'm looking at the streaming service, and I have a green light, so I think we're a go. Now, I wanted to share a few projects with you today, so actually three, and I'm going to be sharing with you three ways to use the Aspen Tree Dies. And there's a bit of a reason for that, um, which I'll go into in a second. Let's just see if I've got some people on. Oh my goodness, I can see comments today. Hello, Kathy. Hello, Kim. Hello, Karen. I am so happy that this is working. I'll just take a quick peek on YouTube. I think it's working as well. Yep, Kathy's here. Okay, Kathy, thank you. I really appreciate that. It's really hard to get these streaming services going, so I'm glad it's working today. Now, before I get started, I just wanted to mention that if anybody is interested in placing an order, you can go to karinachin.stampinup.net. Uh, the hostess code right now is W7GKD3AE. And if you're interested in what I'm doing for stamping, you can go to Karina Chin, or sorry, KarinaStamps.com. And I highly recommend that you sign up for my newsletter because that's where I post all my classes. Now, you might wonder why I mentioned that first. It's because I get so excited with stamping, I always forget at the end. So I like to mention that right away. And then right now, if you're placing a $35 order, you will get a free PDF uh, free PDF tutorial for my virtual card class, which is coming this month. And we're actually using Elephant Parade. So that is super fun. I'll reach over and get the card after to show you. I've designed one. The other two are coming. And then with the $65 order, I have a 30 page, a 30, yeah, 30 project tutorial that I can give out for free. Now you're welcome to buy it too. I'm not sure if it's $25 or $35. I have to double check, but it's a whole bunch of different demonstrators. So I submitted one project and then there's 29 more projects. And then if you're a team member, I'm going to be sending it out today for free just to thank you for being part of my group. So that should be super fun. And then of course, if you are spending $120, then you get some celebration products. So let me just jump down here to my screen so I can show you quickly what's going on. So this is one of the projects that we're using today because with celebration, when you place a $120 order, Stamping Up is giving these Aspen tree dies away for free. Now you might go $120, that's a lot Karina to spend. However, um, you can actually buy it instead. This is a bundle called Perched in the Tree. Um, I think it's 72 ish dollars. Well, let's just check to put a little tab here. We're using these today. Uh, you can just buy the bundle for 72 75 and then you'll get a level one celebration item. So that's these over here. So I recommend the brush metallic cardstock, the silver foil. You can get these great craft gift boxes for Christmas. And then there's three embossing folders as well. So you can uh, get lots of free fun stuff right now a celebration or two from this book. I believe there's a few items left. This gorgeous paper is still available. So this is the Rings of Love designer series paper. And I like to make myself a little cheat sheet so that I don't have to open the full paper pack. I can just look on here and go, okay, I want to use this paper and then I can coordinate it with the stamp set. And this does match the, ooh, what's that called? Now I can't think of it. It matches a stamp set. Here it is. It matches the Ringed with Nature bundle, which is stamp set and dies, which we used last night. I'll show you the cards we did. Uh, so you could get the paper for free. I'm going to use it actually on one of my cards with the per Aspen Perch dies, Aspen Tree dies, and I'm using this paper. So that's why I thought I would mention that. And then, you know, if you're going crazy and you order $375, you could get the perfect pomegranate stamp set. But if you're going crazy and spending $375 or having a party, I highly recommend that you get the, um, the starter kit. Because right now, with 
you get to pick $165 in product. You only pay $135 for it. And this is the bonus. So isn't that cool? It's a planner. You get a stamp set. And then you get these fun little notebooks as well, which I haven't used yet. They're too pretty. I don't want to get them dirty. I just use scrap paper half the time. But I'm just going to have to use it. Love it. Use it. Right? What's that one thing? Love it. Chop it. Well, this is love it. Use it. And then you get to be a part of our team. And I think one of the huge perks about getting a starter kit is getting to order early. So this is one of the things that we can do as demos. We get to order these new bundles. This new campaign will come out September 1st for customers. But we can actually get our hands on it now. So I'll be talking about that more in September. And I'll be designing some classes on that because I just think that's super fun. And then, you know, like I said, if you didn't want the starter kit, but you're placing a huge order, you know, team, not team up, but grab some friends, place a big order, and then you get the perfect pomegranate stamp set for free. Now, I haven't used this yet, but last night at our card class, a lot of the girls were using this leaf image, and I have to say I loved it. So I'm glad I have one myself. So I'm going to be making some pomegranate cards, you know, in my spare time. Why not? And then these are the cards we made last night. So if you're looking for a monthly group to join to make cards, you don't have to. There's no commitment. You can just tell me you want to join for the upcoming month. There's always four cards and you have to use whatever stamps you have on hand. Right now I'm focusing on the um, Hippest Hippos, which is a free celebration item. And it, I use the, the Hippest Hippos dies, which are also a free celebration item free with $60 order. So to get the dies and the hippo, you would need to spend 120 now you're probably thinking wait a minute that's a cow well yes it is we just added some spots to it and we turned him into a happy little cow because i wanted to show the ladies how cool this little gift card holder envelope die was right and i think this could be great for um, men or women and then you know i made another one do i have it here i colored the flowers oh i did this one has flowers, you know, a little more feminine. So this was colored with um, a retired stamping blend. I think I use Seaside Spray. And then this one was just a nice bright yellow. So that was kind of fun. And then the other card we made, look how cool this is. So this is free level one celebration paper. It's actually white with silver dots. And then the little hippo slides off. See how it's locked in place? And then you slide it off and then your card opens. Ta-da! So that was a bit of a trick that I showed them last night too. And I think everybody, that was their two favorite cards, which I was kind of shocked because look at this card. I thought this would be the favorite. So this one used the World, is it World of Flowers. Unfortunately, the stamp set and the papers sold out. Celebration as well supplies last. But you could easily make this card with some of the other pro uh, products I'm showing you. So this is a pop-up bendy card. Isn't that cool? So that's what we made last night. This one wasn't too, too hard. And then, of course, this is a video I did last week. So if you like or share my videos, I'm going to start putting your name in for a draw. And I took a look at the comments on YouTube last week, and Anne commented. So I'm going to send Anne this card. I think she would really like this card. And it would be a good sample for her. Uh, to have because it's not that hard to do once you have the measurements and again I did a video of three cards last week so you can just go and watch the video and let me know what you think okay is there any other announcements oh yeah this is one of the cards from the virtual card class how cute is elephant parade now you can't order it yet I think it's available on August 29th so I've got three people wanting it so I'm watching as soon as it's available I'm putting the order through for the stamp set and the bundle so if you want one, let me know, and I will put it on my order immediately list. And then on October 22nd, I'm having an in-person retreat in Edmonton. It uh, goes from 9 to 4. It's $99 and includes a stamp set. So you could get this. is all bundled up. Card. And I didn't make this. Karen Scott made this as part of our team swaps. And I love it, Karen. I think you're on here. This is stunning and so beautiful. I don't even want to make Christmas cards now because I think I'm going to be outstamped again. Everybody always outstamps me. Or you could get uh, this stamp set. So the $99 includes one of the stamp sets. It includes 
a whole bunch of door prizes. I always go crazy for my in-person events. Um, and that's going to be October 22nd. I have four spots left. Now I am offering a virtual option, which will include all the PDF tutorials. And if I have a tricky card, it'll have some videos as well that you can watch as well as all the good stuff. And there's an optional goodie bag you can sign up for for $60 and it includes product that's $64 um, and I'm only selling it for 60. So I am um, subsidizing that a little bit for my attendees just to thank everybody for coming. Okay, and I think that's it. Um, dum -da -dum -da -dum. Yeah, I think that's it. There is a new paper pumpkin coming September 10th. And it's going to be Halloween treats. And then two, this is the new Cozy and Bright kit that you can buy. So if you're a new stamper, it's probably a lot to expect you to, you know, buy all the products to get this. So you could sign up for the Halloween Paper Pumpkin kit. Or let's take a look at this. And let's just see if I've got any comments or questions. Oh, I see Betty's here. Hello, Betty. Thanks for watching. And I'm just going to go down here. And Gail's here too. Hello, Gail. Hello. And I said hello to Kim. Thank you guys for watching me. I love it when my friends watch and stamp with me. Nothing that makes me happier. Okay, so I think this is $32. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Let's see. So you open it up and you get a stamp set you get a ink spot and then you get a little stamping block as well plus these little label sheets plus all plus stamp and dimensionals put your cards together and these are the cards that they make so these would be really fun to do with your girlfriends to do with your friends you know maybe as a christmas gift for your nieces nephews you know anybody girlfriends and so i really like that that uh the images are really pretty it looks like cinnamon sticks and oranges so i think i'm going to have to have a stamp night where everybody just brings their kit and we stamp online together to put these together because i am a collector and i need to start getting my kits together so i'm gonna have to schedule a kit night so if you are a stamping collector as well and need to put your kits together leave me a comment and i'll send you an invite and we can either do it on zoom or facebook either way and then these were a few swaps I had still from using that Rings of Love celebration paper. So I just thought I would quickly show you. Aren't they pretty? So pretty. And if anybody speaks French, you can let me know what this says. I'm sure it's something lovely. I have no clue, however. No clue. Took French many years ago, but, you know, I never had any French-speaking friends. So I kind of lost it all. Okay, so... Let's see, Kim just did four, four of those kits. Okay, Kim, so I have to put them together. Gail is also a kit collector. Okay, Gail, so I think what I'll do is I will make an announcement on my Karina's Creations Facebook page and Karina Stamps, and then we'll get a Zoom going and just get together and stamp because I need to put some of my kits together. Okay, are you guys ready to stamp? This is my favorite part of the day. Okay, now the reason why I'm doing this fun little gift card, because it's actually a gift card holder, is I don't give a lot of Halloween cards, but I love giving treats. And I think I could put a Starbucks gift card in this. So this is a cute little gift card holder. It makes a fun little pouch. And let's see, I had this little Visa. I don't think there's anything left on here, so... No, I won't be sending it to you. I'm pretty sure it's gone. Ooh, you know what? I should make this longer and then watch when you feed this through, you can then tie it and then they can use this to pull out the gift card. Oh, I'm going to have to redesign this. Maybe I'll do that when I show you. But isn't that perfect? You know, a little $20 Starbucks card for your friend or something for Halloween. $5 Tim Hortons card. You know, I just thought it was super cute. So this came from using this die. And then I just did my gnome class on the weekend and thought, you know what? I want to make this gnome because Diana Gibbs posted this on the demonstrator planning place. And I just thought it was too cute. So I thought, well, what if we turn the branch into a broom? Because you can get these free right now. So these are the Aspen tree dies that are free with a $120 order. Look how cute they are. 
So it actually comes with the die to get the bird. So you'll probably want to get the bird eventually. And I think the sentiments are really nice, right? Your kindness warms my heart. I just thought that was so nice. And I pre-cut everything just to speed it up today because I can talk. I can talk and talk and talk. And you guys probably want to see more stamping. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is I got these great celebration tag dies that are kind of hidden in the mini catalog. So check them out. Check, check, check them out. There you go. That, it coordinates with the stamp set, but you don't need the stamp set. You do need the dies, I think. I think the dies are awesome. And I've been using this one a lot, but I've been cutting it in half and stamping on it and just putting it on cards. So I have already cut this out, cut my pieces out. So I did a little bit of work already. Okay, this is what it looks like when you cut it out. And I use Parakeet Party because I love bright colors for Halloween. I think it's fun. And then I'm just going to fold in the sides on the score line. So let's get a little bit of, a little bit. Let's get out my bone folder to go over the lines. Now it looks like I didn't score it. I don't think this is supposed to be folded over. So let's just try and move it over a titch. Okay, that's better. There we go. And then I'm just going to get my liquid glue. Now you can use your, any kind of adhesive. You can use stamp and seal. You can use tear and tape adhesive. I just am really good at using my green glue. And then I'm just going to close it up and then we'll just stick that down for a minute. Now let's put a block or something on there, something heavy. Go like that. That's not that heavy, but good enough. Okay, let's build our witch. So I went and bought this super cute bewitching stamp set with the coordinating punch. And I believe it's around, is it $45 or $50? Maybe someone can put it in the comments for me. I know someone will be watching, but I just think these are super cute. Because ideally, I wanted to put it on my hippo that I got for free. But I haven't done that yet. But the gnomes were super cute, right? Because these were the gnome cards that we made. Oh, 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 look at the gnome card. So this was my gnome stamp count. So I kind of go all out with my stamp counts. I give you a goodie bag. I give you a treat. We do lots of fun projects. Plus all the PDF tutorials. Uh, we also made a gnome picture that looked like this. And the challenge was to create three other seasonal backgrounds to go on the frame I gave everybody. So my friend Sharon did an amazing job. And she posted them in my Karina's Creations Facebook group. Um, it's a closed group, but if you're a stamper, um, I probably will let you in i shouldn't say probably you know what if you're a stamper yes you're welcome to join us and come into the group okay so we've got my gift card holder done now let's just move this to the side and we've got my gnome piece already cut out i cut them out in highland heather i've already die cut the branch and then the broom is just cut from an oval we have an oval punch and it has a scallop shape and then it has just a regular oval shape. So I just, you know, snipped a little bit. And then we're just going to go in here like this. And um, I think we need something that looks like this. It doesn't quite look like a broom yet to me. Oh my goodness, I put this in my water. I have a cup of water because we're going to be doing some water coloring to do the other cards. Right, we still have two more cards to do. Look at them, look at them. So fun. But I thought I would do this one first because this is like the easiest. Okay, so let's just put this down. Does anybody like punch art? I love punch art. I actually used to do a lot of punch art classes, but I haven't for a long time. Yeah, I think I need this a bit wider. And this is truly how I stamp. I just kind of put things together and go, okay, that looks good. And if it doesn't look good, it's just paper. Pull out more paper. Okay, so this is my broom. I'm just going to cover this up. We'll add a little bit of adhesive. There it is. That's so funny. I usually use my cup to put my glue in to stand it up, but it's got water in it, so I better not do that. Now, I had a glue cup. I don't know where it went now. That's a bit of a mystery. Okay, so there is my broom for my witch. 
and I went to put my stamps on my Stamparatus. Now, if you are a new stamper, this is like your best friend because it's very forgiving. So if you don't do a great job stamping your image, you can just do it again. So what you do is you don't use the blocks. You put these down on the door, on the clear door. And then I really like to put a stamp underneath the door just to give it some stability. And then I'm just going to, why am I wiggling? I'm wiggling for some reason, that's a mystery. There's got to be something under here on my desk. I don't know, we'll figure it out. And this is a brand new ink pad, so this isn't going to be an issue. But my other ink pad does not have a lot of black on it, and I wanted a really nice black image. And let's see what this looks like. That's pretty good. No, I think I want it a little darker. So then the beauty of the Stamparatus is that I can then go over it again. And it has a magnet to hold it in place. But I don't think I needed to do that today. Because, you know, it's a big sheet of paper. It's in the corner. Oh, see, look at that nice crisp image. Okay, so we've got that. I am just going to cut out my witch hat with my punch. Oh, let's go like this. I probably should have made it a bit smaller. Because I'm getting a bit of an edge. So let's try this again. So that it lines up nicely. Whenever you get Stampin' Up! punches or any product from Stampin' Up!, you should really try the punches, try the products. I believe we have 90 days to return things. They sent out an update with their return policies. So Stampin' Up! is actually really good about standing behind their products. But um, it is good to try them out. Because sometimes the punch is not very often. But, you know, there might be something wrong with it. And Halloween's coming up. So make your Halloween stuff now. There we go. To dumb. Okay, so there is my green polka dots. And I'm actually using this is dark fresh freesia, even though it's island heather um, cardstock. I guess I could have used fresh freesia to get everything to match, but I don't know. It's a treat. I'm not too worried if it doesn't match. Close enough. And then I need to color my buckles on my witch's boots. Now, I really think we needed a second punch to punch the boots out. But that's okay. I will fussy cut really quickly and show you how cute this is. Um, da -da -dum. So we are going to glue on his pink nose. There it is. I'm like, where is his pink nose? Let's see. Let's see. Okay, I had a pop-up asking if I wanted to do Microsoft updates right now. I would say big no to that. Now we're stamping. Who wants to do Microsoft updates? Not me. Okay, and we just put this down. Cute little nose. And then I'm going to put this down a little lower. It's got a little mark here if you're putting on your gnome hat. But, um, you know, we're making a witch. I'm making a party witch. Oh, look at this. You can't line that up either. It's got to go down lower. This is the other reason I use liquid glue because you saw how I was able to move that. Pretty good, hey? Okay, so let's cut this out really fast and then I'll go on to my next project. Now, if you are new, I highly recommend these paper snips that Stampin' Up! sells. Sometimes they go in back order. I'm not sure. I haven't looked recently to see if they're available. But they're super sharp and do a really good job of cutting things out. So you can see how fast I can cut this. And then we'll just go snip. We'll go like this, snip. And then this way. And this way. I guess I could have done this ahead of time. But, you know, this doesn't take long. There. Almost done. My witch boot. And then if you're watching the replay, feel free to fast forward. I will not be sad. Okay, so there's one pair of witch boots. And I think we only have one image. Yeah, we only have one image in this set. And then I was thinking I really wished it had a little boo stamp. 
but it doesn't. So I'll show you where I got boot. Isn't that just perfect? Okay, so let's uh, get these little witch boots on. Let's put one here, a little bit of glue here. You could always use glue dots as well. So let's see, we'll put one here, one here. Okay, that is way too... There, I'm happy with that. Because we got to so show the little stockings, right? Okay, now remember how I mentioned that on my gift card I should put ribbon? So let's just pull this off. Watch this trick. Okay, so we're going to go like this. We want... I don't know, we need more ribbon. So this ribbon is in the annual catalog. No clue how much I'm using. doesn't really matter. And I'm just going to go like this, I think. And then we're just going to slide it in like this. And then that way they know to pull it. Okay, I changed my mind. I'm going to feed it through my holes first. Okay, if I'm making 20 of these, this would be way too much work. But if you're just doing one for a gift, then, you know, that's not bad. Either that or you're going to watch a lot of Netflix while you're doing this. Okay, there we go. Okay, now isn't that cool? And then they can just pull it up to get the treat out and it will slide up. Okay, that worked pretty good. So let's just go like this. And then we're just going to glue the broom on, glue the witch on, and then we're done. Ta-da! Okay, so let's set this aside. Now I've got two witch treats ready to go. And then I want to show you a little bit of the Aspen Tree dies. Now, this was the original one I came up with. I decided I'm going to do this in my monthly card class for the girls because I love the background. Isn't that gorgeous? So this is going to be one of the cards for my Wednesday morning card class for Monday night card class in September. So pretty. And then I think we're going to start with this card first. So I've got my pieces done already. Except I'll just show you how I went and did my birch tree. So let's get a piece of, you know what, we'll just get a piece of uh, Whisper White cardstock. Okay, so we'll put that here. And I've already cut out from the free brushed gold uh, metallic paper. This is also a free celebration item right now. And I cut one leaf and then a couple little leaves. And then what I like to do is I am going to use my water painter and some re-inkers. Now I have a white, look at how old this is. This white craft pad is got to be probably 15 years old. I use it all the time. You can get a new one as well. Um, but I need to grab out my water painters and let's get uh, this brush tip. Okay, and this is, now you can fill this with water and then squeeze it and the water will come out. That's too much effort for me, so I just grab it like this and use it like a paintbrush. And I'm going to wet it a bit so it's a little bit soupy. And we're just going to create a watercolor wash on these trees because it's got a bit of crumb cake. Right? And then it looks more like a birch tree. So I grew up in Plumfla, Manitoba. And uh, we had a lot of birch trees growing. So you can see this doesn't take long, but it's so fun. Fun to color. Okay, I think that's good. That's good for my whitewash. And I'll just check and see if there's any questions or anything. Sandra, hello. Leona, hello. Nice to see you. And Jennifer's here. Hello, hello. Oh, the punch is $26. Thank you. See, I knew somebody would tell me how much it was. Okay, so that looks pretty good, but that doesn't look like a birch tree, right? It certainly does not. So I'm just going to take my Memento Black ink, and I'm just going to go down here and give a drop of re-inker. Whenever you buy your black ink pad, make sure you get one of these. They're hard to get. They sell out a lot. Okay, and again, I'm just going to make it a little bit soupy, and I'm just going to go kind of where the dashes are. Um, it lightens up a bit because we've got the craft ink on here. So I'm just going to do it like this. And look at the nice fine tip you get on here. I love this brush. So fun. 
and then we'll put some on here so right now I'm just kind of going over the little embossed areas on my die okay how does that look good enough I think that's pretty good it bleeds a little bit but you know what it looks good look at my fingers though I think I need to give this a little bit of a cleaning okay I'm good with that so that's where I got that from we'll put those two away and I'm just going to get my um my little scrubber stamp and scrub because my fingers are all gooey so I don't want to transfer that onto my paper so this one is done so let's just set this aside because I've got one done already and I just thought I would make kind of a foldy, a foldy outy card. So I could actually put some more trees in the background. I don't think I'm going to. I just have my hello and I have some leaves and I have a moose. So the first thing I'm going to do is just stick this on the inside of my card. And it's just cut a, um, a quarter of an inch smaller than my regular one. So my regular card front is um what is it eight and a half inches by five and a half inches scored at four and a quarter so that makes the inside panel um eight inches by five and a quarter scored at four and it's gonna look like that so isn't that pretty so i could stamp something behind here now we need a moose in here the moose is kind of coming through the trees now I could actually glue the moose down, but I think I'm just going to put some adhesive back here for my moose. Just a little bit. And think about the gnome. How cute would the gnome be? Right? Okay, so there's my moose. He's coming through the birch trees. And then we're just going to say hello. And we're using my favorite stamp set, which is Go To Greetings. Um, you know what? I forgot to tell you that um, the little boo that I used on my tag came from Cottage Wreaths. It has boo, hello, grateful, Merry Christmas, and makes beautiful cards. This is actually going to be a separate video one day, but that's where I got my little boo from. Because I think grateful would be really pretty, or hello on here. I love it when I have sentiments that aren't too specific. Right? And then I have to tell you about this. You can take a guess at what this is. Okay, so let's just glue these down here and then we'll just put a little hello yeah I think we'll do that I kind of like clusters I put it up there maybe I'll put it up here okay so let's put one leaf here and then we're gonna pop this leaf up and then we're going to pop up the hello And then this card is done so isn't that fun but it just shows how you can die cut from cake cardstock and create your birch background with it okay we'll put that like that now the only thing i think it's missing is a little bit of twine so i'm just taking a quick peek because see it's right in front of me I have all this wonderful twine right now. So this is the Baker's Twine Essentials Pack. And I love it because you get a whole bunch of colors. So I think I'm going to use this crumb cake one. You can also use linen thread. Linen thread is a really good product as well. But I like the assortment of colors. And if you're a new stamper, it's great to get a whole bunch of colors in one package. And then we'll just cut this with my paper snips. And to dumb, we are done with my card. So I'm just going to glue that right there. And then we have a cute, simple card. Now I need my glue dots. Everybody needs a glue dot. Yes, we do. Okay, so there we go. Cute. And then I thought the inside looked kind of boring. Huh. Okay. Okay. So this is what not to do, guys. It didn't open because my uh, Stampin' Dimensional is not strategically placed. So I'm going to just pull this off and we'll uh, fix it later. But that's coming off because I really want my card to open. And then I think what I'm going to do 
is maybe do like a sunset or something with that. What would that look like? I don't know. Okay, let's glue this down on the inside. Like that. Isn't that pretty? And then on this part, that's what I was going to do. I was going to do a quick little sunset. I've got some pumpkin pie. Okay, sure. We'll do a pumpkin pie sun. Let's just stamp this off for a second. Wait, wait, wait. Here's my grid paper. I really wanted to create a sun. Okay, let's see. Does that show through? It does show through. You know what? That's kind of cool. I like that. And then I can do the whole background in some blues and some greens at the bottom. So I'm going to finish up this later, but I think I like that with the sun popping through. It looks like the sun is setting. And I do like the pumpkin pie because it kind of coordinates with all my colors. Okay, so stay tuned for this one. I will post a picture of it on my blog um, a little later. But yeah, that's super cute. Okay, so this is card number one. And then I'll just show you this one because I thought we needed to make a shaker card. But before I start, when I die cut this, this through on my die cutting machine, I put a piece of press and seal over top. So now I can actually go and add glue to the back of these and put it on a piece of black cardstock or a dark cardstock. And then it's gonna look like you've got the reverse image of the a reverse image of the trees. Can you see the can you see how they pop? So I'll have to do another card with this now that I have the reversed image. I want to do it on black. And I think we need like a spooky witch or something or a gnome on it. But anyway, that's one card that's not coming. So I guess this is more than three ideas today. Okay, so let's put that there. And then we'll just quickly make a shaker card. So this is where I use that Rings of Love free designer series paper. But I thought it was a little, that's a little busy for me, I think. A little bit busy. Okay, why do I have two of these? I don't think we need this one. Yeah, I thought you didn't really see the birch. So I wanted it to be a little bit softer by adding vellum. And then I thought, well, why don't I make it a shaker card? Okay, so this is my thought. This is what I'm going to do. Where is my stamp and seal? Let's get really good coverage on here. The stamp and seal always slips. Okay, I give up. We're going back to my back to my green glue. And what I'm doing is I am attaching the vellum to my early espresso layer. Okay, there we go. I'll put that down. Hopefully it all lines up well. If not, I will do a little bit of trimming. Okay, that looks nice and soft. Now to make a shaker card, what I'm going to do is use these foam adhesive strips. They're pretty much a Stampin' Dimensional, but they're a nice long shape, right? So we'll put one of these here, and you want it to be outside of the cut window. Let's see, is that going to show through? No, that'll be just fine. And then you can just trim it as you need to. But this will make a really fast shaker card. Okay, and then I've got some longer strips. Mine are cut down a bit smaller. I think we did a shaker card at one of my classes. We must have. Or was it a games night? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And then I do have on this Friday a Facebook class with Candy Rattray in the States. So we're doing a paper party. Now the kits are already sold out. However, if you wanted the PDF tutorial... Um, you are welcome to join us and get the PDF tutorial. She's a really fun stamper as well. I love working with Candy. And she is somewhere warm in the States. I think she's from Texas. I don't know if anybody's seen any of my stuff with uh, Candy. Maybe you would know. I think I should know that. But I don't. I feel with COVID, I've been locked up for so long. I feel like I haven't gone on a trip for ages. 
So I'm actually going to be going to on stage in Vancouver, I decided, um, in November. Because I can fly down really quick and I don't think Otto will miss me that much. And in fact, Otto, my super stamping puppy, is actually sleeping right beside me. Isn't he being a good boy? Now, as I say that, if UPS comes to the door, um, he will bark. So hopefully it will hold out. Okay, what do you think? Let's add some, some of these little shaker pieces. So these are in the annual catalog. They're the Sparkle and Shine Sequence Assortment. Okay, and I think that's enough for this card. I think they were in the catalog last year. So you might already own some of these. And then all I'm going to do, or you know what I should have done? I should have done it the other way. I should have put the sequence here and then put it over top. But too late. Okay, wish me luck. Wish me luck, people. This is like going in blind. Because once you put this on the foam, there's no going back. And it's sticky. Oh, sticking to my nail. How did I do? Okay, let's seal it up. See, isn't that pretty? It's just nice and soft. So that you hear the shaking. You see some of the little elements behind it. And then I'm just going to put it on a normal card base. Like that. Easy peasy shaker card. And if you wanted it to be a little bit brighter, you could use a window sheet instead of the vellum. But like I said, I wanted to make the background a little bit softer. So that's why I use the vellum. So it actually looks like trees in the background. Okay, and I have pre-stamped my sentiment. So let's just put that on. Da -da -da -dum. And we'll go like this. So if you're wondering where the sentiment came from, it came from the Perched in a Tree, which is the coordinating set to these dies. But I really wanted to show you that you don't need the stamp set to make super cute cards with this set. I just think it's super fun. And then we just need a couple stamp and dimensional, and my card is almost done. So what do you think of the projects today? Thumbs up, thumbs down. And, you know, if it really does help me when you share or like or comment on the videos, um, especially on YouTube. YouTube, um, I think it must be some kind of a process where based on your likes, followers, shares, that's how they share it with other people. So that's why it does help a lot. And then, too, I'm always looking for new stampers, new customers, you know, and some um, you can actually buy from me anywhere in Canada. And then if you're in the States, you can get PDF tutorials. You can still participate and join in. Especially the paper party with candy, right? You can get kits from candy. And we do three of them a year. Paper parties. Okay, I think card is done. Okay, what do you think of this? Okay, let's clear this up and let's see what I made today. And then you can tell me what you think. I really like that blue card, but I'm going to save that blue card for September. I think my ladies will absolutely love it. Okay, so this is missing something, though. I think we need to add some classic metallic dots. Do we have brown in here? <gasps> no. We do not. How about brushed metallic dots? Oh, yeah, brushed metallic dots. That's what we need. Because it looks flat, right? Uh, now, what is this? Gold on here? It's a brushed gold. So let's just add one there. We'll just add a couple, kind of sprinkle them over here. Okay, now I'm happy with it. Isn't that pretty? So that's a way that we can make an easy shaker card. And then you can make your fun little treat holder with the same branch. And then the last card we made was this little Hello Moose. And I think I'm going to finish it up. I kind of want to create a blue background now with some grass. But we've got a bit of a sun in there. So I want to thank you for joining me today. If you're interested in classes or anything, just you can shoot me a message leave me a comment and I want to thank you for joining me today so Gail likes the project Sandra likes the projects thank you for sticking around it was kind of long today and I'm glad auto cooperated and if you're watching 
the replay just leave me a comment you can ask me questions as well so thank you so much for joining me today everyone i hope you have an amazing day bye